So if it's acting like this and it's time to come out, just tip the box up. And the first thing you should do is to put a little drizzle of hydroxide in the beaker, maybe 10, 20 ml. Come to the sink and swirl out the outside edges, oh sorry, the inside edges of the beaker with the hydroxide. So if you do this, anything inside of the beaker is coated with this sodium hydroxide solution with the molarity you're trying to find out. So both boxes should be the same, but I would just keep working in one box all the time. But they should still be both the same molarity. So get yourself next about 150ml of sodium hydroxide. Come towards the direct and if you're very small and that's a fur, that's bad news for you. So just simply release the pump, move it down and you want it to be at high level near enough so that's okay for me. If that's still too high for you, what I don't want to see is that you might be better then to twist the stand around. Right? So it's literally below you. What I don't want you to do is to have that up there and you're going Ugh, and pour it on yourself or over everything else. That's not good practice at all. I'm not looking at everyone by saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> So the next thing you need to do is to rinse inside of the burette with the hydroxide solution. So put the funnel in place. Make sure the key or the tap is closed. Drizzle a little bit of this in. Maybe about 10 mil. That's all you need. Take the funnel away. Come back to all the sink. So then we need to run down here some of the hydroxide solution. So this part needs to be filled. So just release the cap the, the key or the tap, let about 5 mil run down, and close it. All that now is contained in the hydroxide solution of the molarity you're trying to find. And then just coat the inside of this with the hydroxide solution. So just turn it on its side, make sure all points of the glass on the inside have contact. Pour out. What you do not want to do at this point is to open the tap because then you have to fill that back up again. That is now filled with hydroxide. That's good. All you have to do is to fill this up. Come back to our stand, put it back into position, clamp it. When you're clamping glass, don't clamp too tightly because guess what will happen? Yeah, you've got it in one. So it's just a firm, tight grip. It's not it's one last turn and you'll break the glass. Next thing, fill up the burette with the hydroxide. So, and make the sodium hydroxide solution appear to around about the zero mil mark. But if it's not zero mil, that's not a problem. Because what I can do is just record the volume that I'm starting from. So, as you'll notice on the board now, I've made up a little line to say what a meniscus is. It's the same here. Once you've made up the burette with hydroxide, you'll see a little curve. You should try and get it to 0, 0.0, but maybe you don't want to do that. If I've got it to 0, 0.5, I see the curve lands between 0 and 1 halfway through. So it's 0, 0.5. That is my starting volume. So I just Put that to one side. One person can certainly be doing this as your friend is making the acid up. Once the acid's been made up, then the next person needs to now put the, the acid solution into the conical flask. So there are three conical flasks left out for each group, and there is a pipette. There is a bowl, pet bowl, or a pipette filler, which is with a lever. If you're using the bowl, you need to put this on carefully. So whenever you put in glassware onto the end of rubber tubing or whatever, it doesn't go on with a push, because if you push it, it breaks, it might go through your finger. So it just goes on with a gentle twisting position. You put it in with a twist. 
and that's nice and firm because I can leave it like that and it doesn't drop out. Likewise, if it's going on here, it doesn't go, I'll get it all the way through. It's just a gentle twist. So, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll do one with this one and I'll use the bulb in a second. So now the inside of the pet needs to be too rinsed with the acid solution you've just made up. So put the, the pet tip into here and, and, and move the wheel up. But can I just say as well, each pipette is also graduated. So can we all see a blue kind of line near my hand? There's a line there. That means that if we were to take the solution from here to the top, this is a 25 milliliter, 25 cm cube pipette. We put in, we suck up. We only need about five to 10 mil, because guess what we're going to do now? We're going back towards the sink area and we're going to coat the inside of the pet with the acid. We only need about 4 to 5 mil to rinse the inside of the pet. If you're moving glassware around the lab, you don't walk around like that. You mount it into wall, it's not a sphere. You move with care and caution. The, the, the sharp end of the pet should be behind your hand. And you move like that. I do not want to see you so if you're using the wheel, you can basically move the solution up and down like that. If you're using a bulb, again, there are three numbers, one, two, three. I'll show you what to do. So put the pet on, squeeze one. a vacuum. Two, sucks up. Three, expands. So once you've squeezed one and pressed the bulb, you create a vacuum, you put into solution with two, you squeeze two on the uh, bulb and you should, I would hope, start to suck the solution up. This is embarrassing, it's not sucking up. Some of the bulbs can be knackered as well, right? yeah. so that's embarrassing. The bulb isn't sucking up. So I'd what number is the, is the uh, funnel meant to go into? Sorry? The pipette. What, what number? What number is it meant to go into? Well, this is a 25. No, 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 on the uh, bones. Bone? Yeah. Mine goes in the end here. Got three numbers one, two, three. If you squeeze one and press this red funky part of the, the bulb, it basically creates a vacuum. You press two and you should suck up, but I think there's something wrong with the bulb. So some bulbs are knackered as well because if you suck solution up into them, you can throw them and it's not going to use at all. So if I now just pull the wheel up, again, I need to get 25 mil accurately. So I'm moving the solution up. So I think I've got the meniscus at eye level. But what I should do is do this accurately. I should swap down and make sure the, the flask is level on the bench. I get my eye, eye level to the mark, and move up ever so gently. And I think that is the 25 mil. I get my flask in position. I lift out, put it into here. Now I can push the wheel to, to move it down, and it will expel the solution. Or I can just gently take that off and let the solution run down. These are graduated pieces of uh, equipment. So once the solution hits the bottom of the glass, the last thing you need to do is to go, you don't do this, you can go off, blow it in or tap it, because that means you've added 25 mil and a few drops more. You'll always find that the bottom of the pair has a few drops in the bottom of it. And that's right because it's calibrated to retain a couple of drops. If you were to go off and blow it out, you put 25 mil in and a bit more. What you can do, and this is allowed, is that you can just take the bottom of the pipette and quickly just dip it into the rest of the solution and you've got everything out there. You'll notice there is a drop of solution at the bottom. That's fine. Don't go get it out. No need to. Now, I, if I was you, would make all three flasks up as you're going along. So do all three at the same time because you do the titration. And the first titration you do is a rough one. 
So you need to do it rough. So then you take some of the indicator phenol phthalein, one, two, three drops, and give it a swirl. Now you can do the titration. So I'm right-handed, so I need basically to work out which way I'm comfortable to do this. Do I use my right hand to swirl and the left hand to add? Or do I want to twist it around that way and use my right hand to add? I think if you're right-handed, you should probably use that to swirl it and add with the left hand. So I noticed, and I'll go, you go to your sheet and say rough titration, I'll notice the first one is at 0.5. You need to do a, a rough one first, so I'm going to say right in my chart, start tight at 0.5. Then I'm just going to let everything drizzle through and I put a white tile under the flat because I need to see a colour change. The colour change right. is the first appearance of the pinky colour. Wow. So when I'm doing this I can see a little pink colour in the flask as I'm going along. So I'm swirling away, I can see the pink and it's just that it's, uh, it's permanent. So that, from 0.5 and I finish at 13.7 I can say I've added 13.2 millilitres to create the colour change. Now, because you had another two flasks lined up, what you should then do is put the next flask underneath and do it more accurately. So, if we said it was 13.2 as a rough, why don't you add 10 mil quickly and the last 3 mil add with accuracy? Now, you'll have a fresh flask under here, but I'm going to use this one. What you can do then is to add things accurately at 0.1 mil at a time. You can take the key and you can just quickly go 360 degree rotation. No, 180 that was, wasn't it? 180. And then another 180. And then another 180. And you saw every single point, and then there's a little drop. Each drop is 0.1 mil. So you can add 0.1 mil drop wise. So whatever your rough one is, take 2 or 3 mil off that. The next one, once you're 2 3 mil away from the rough title value, at the next drops, drop wise. What you can also do as well, can I just have that water bottle as well? Once you're getting ready to do the first proper one after the rough one, why don't you just rinse around the side of the flask as well? If, why don't you keep having the 0.1 mil drops? Because if you were swirling like that, some of the acid and alkali can splash up the side of the flask. If you were to wash it back in, it all goes into the solution and you can it. Okay, so you need two tighter values, two tighter values within 0.1 millimetre. So I might say the tighter values are 13.3 and 13.4. If I have 13.3 and 13.8 tighter values, they are not 0.1 mil within each other, the 0.5, so you have to do a third one. If you need to recycle flasks, take to the sink, pour down the sink, wash out with water, Swirl out with water, bring back, add again. Okay? Good luck. Got an hour in ten. Carry on.